Empire. Welcome along to AFTV's Time to Preview. Yes, it's back. We're all excited, man. The Europa League is back. Arsenal versus Rapid Vienna. The Europa League. It's back. You excited? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Be real, man. Um. Let me give it. I've got a quiz for you. Yeah, go on. The Europa League music, what is it? Give it a humming for me. Oh, no, no. Do you know, we we I, all know the Champions League. Da, 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 um, the Champions. Now, <laughs> oh, Europa no. League, we've been in it now, what? This is our third season. What's the music? It's annoying because I actually quite like it. Um, it's completely <laughs> left my head. See, um, that tells you all you need to know about the Europa League, yeah? Especially um, in the early rounds, it's like. And the one thing I'm really going to miss about it, James, right, is that obviously, normally, Europa League does throw up some destinations that you've never been to mm. before as a football fan. Now, this would have been my first trip to Rapid Vienna. Mm. It would have been my first trip to Dundalk, which I've been looking forward to that one, and the Vienna one, actually, and also to Molde. And obviously, now, all of those games behind closed doors. But it is the early stages of the um, Europa League. And... Um, yeah, we've got a pretty easy group when you look at it. You know what I mean? On paper, that's an easy group. Arsenal's supposed to top that group. Of course, it's a competition that gives a chance for young players to come through. Back, mm. um, Bakayo Saka, last year, this is where he really emerged, wasn't it? Yeah, In absolutely. this competition. Um, so, in that aspect, it's good, but it's not the Champions League. However, winning it gives you a chance to be in the Champions League. So, it is quite important. What do you know about Rapid Vienna? <sighs> Apart from Vienna's a beautiful city and um, it's known for, is it the Beethoven and stuff like that? <laughs> what do you know about Rapid Vienna? Well, I mean, um, it's obviously very hard to compare. And I mean, this with all due respect. I mean, it's hard to compare um, sort of the level of maybe Austrian football and the Austrian league compared to um, yeah, the Premier League, for example, or just mm. other, other leagues around Europe. But in fairness to them, they've, they've made a good start to the season. Um, they sit second in the table, I believe. Um, they've won three games, only drawn the one, scored 10 goals and only conceded three. So, I mean, again, a small pool, a league I don't know a hell of a lot of about. But mm. I think what we're taking from that is they've been pretty efficient in front of goal and they've been good at the back as well. So, especially going to their place, I'm not expecting an easy game at all, mm. especially if we are going to rotate the team a little bit. Um, but they've made they've made a good start. They're only behind RB Salzburg, who have been you know they've looked good for a few years now. Um, and you know Austrian football's been producing a lot of good players recently. So yeah, Alaba. Yeah, they're Alaba. going to you know they're going to they're going to be tough for sure. I mean I've got a few stats here around them. Um, this is Rapid Vienna's eighth Europa League campaign, and they did reach the knockout stages on two occasions previously. Actually, both very recently in 2015-16 season and the 18-19, and we all remember. 1819 for that sort of mm. drop out to Olympiacos. Mm. Actually, that wasn't, sorry, that was Baku, my bad. Mm. So, um, I don't think it's going to be easy. I think this is the toughest game of the group. This is definitely so the far. toughest game in the group. And, I, and, and, and when I was looking at it, I was thinking to myself, I feel put out, even though I've got the game at the weekend against Leicester, I do feel Mikel Arteta, whilst he will play young players, will play quite a strong team as well. Mm. I think, you know, and, you know, I, re I reckon we're going to see probably a start in that game for, for Thomas Partey. I really yeah, do. I could, yeah, I, I, I'm, it's a difficult game. It's away from home. Um, you want to mix it up a bit, but I think that's a good game to start him in, give him some minutes ahead of the, the weekend, you know. Um, but I don't think it's going to be just pure kids playing in that game. I really do think, you know, there will be some experienced players in there. Lacazette, I probably think, will start that game. Um, yeah. You know, and in defence, you know, that's going to be interesting. That's going to be really interesting in defence because, all right, you've got players that haven't figured for a while. And is he going to, you know, he's not going to, you know, Socrates, for instance, I mean, not even in the squad, is he, for, no. for this? So I've got the four missing here yeah. are Socrates, Saliba... Ozil and Martinelli, which I think we can expect because, yeah, yeah. You know, because of the injuries. Yeah. So I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be fairly, fairly strongest team. It's going to be a fairly strongest team. Our record in the Europa League, to be fair, has been good, hasn't it? Apart it from has. you know, like you said, we dropped out last year to Olympiacos, which was a bit of a horror show, and obviously Mikel Arteta, that was yeah. under his reign, and he would have been shook by that. Mm. So. 
But our record in this competition, we haven't won it, but we've, you know, got to the finals mm. of it. So we've, we've done very well. We've done very well. Actually, that first Europa League campaign, obviously, we still had Wenger. Um, you know, we beat some good sides, AC Milan, CSK, Moscow. Mm. I thought we were unfortunate against Atletico. I mean, they did what they do. Yep. Um, but I thought we were unfortunate. Um, we that was scored... semi-final, wasn't it? That's that was a semi-final, yeah. Yep. We were obviously hoping Wenger would get that uh, that European trophy mm. in his final campaign. Obviously, it wasn't to be. But, you know, looking at some, some of those stats from that campaign, we scored 14 goals, only conceded four. You know, then in the knockouts, we scored 16 in eight games. So mm. we we've looked always quite potent in the Europa League and that record has sort of stayed true even the year after where you know we don't want to mention Baku too much but obviously we did get to the final mm. and we scored again 30 goals you know throughout the Europa League campaign and mm. you know scoring goals and uh, being you know having I suppose a lot of creativity and a lot mm. of flair isn't something we've really said about Arsenal in the last few years which is strange mm. which is which is not mm. how we normally associate our club but the Europa League has been where we've almost dipped back to form. Now, I know you can put that down to, again, with all due respect, perhaps some of the level of opposition we play. Um, but we, we also rotate the team as well. We also give kids a chance. So they're still very impressive stats. I mean, in the 18-19 season, we beat Ren, Napoli and Valencia before getting to the final. You know, and we've always averaged more goals per game in the Europa League than we have in the Premier League. So I think we can go into this game tomorrow and the rest of the Europa League campaign till the knockouts experimenting a little bit, but also, mm. you know, having a go and actually enjoying the football we play in this competition. Yeah, 100%. And um, like you said, we will be considered one of the favourites to win it, 100%. Um, you know, um, especially if you look at that record, as I said, uh, semi-finalists, finalists in this competition, but still haven't won it, though. That's one thing. We haven't mm. won this competition. And I think Arteta will be looking at it and saying, right, if I could win this... I mean, obviously, the prize is you get into the Champions League, yeah. which is where we all want to be mm. back at. I mean, like five, six years ago, I never thought we'd be in the Europa League. Yeah. You know what I mean? But this is where we've been now. This is our this is a third, third year in. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it so, is, yeah. you know, we need to get out of this thing. And the only way to get out of it is win it. No, I agree. And I think it really is about time we win it. Um, obviously, yeah. the semi final. About time we won a European final. trophy. It, re it really is. Yeah. And, and also... Because I think we're just fundamentally good enough to win it. I think you know Arteta's taken us on leaps and bounds. We, we're talking about getting being good enough to potentially get into the top four, which I believe we might mm. be. Obviously, that's dependent on other teams. So we should really be having a go. I mean, we saw Man United. You know, I don't want to compare us too much to them, but when they've dropped into the Europa League, they've typically done very well. They won it. They got to the semis last year. I don't really see why we're not. You know, people mm. will tell me, well, we got to a semi and a final, which is actually a very good. You know, response mm. to that argument, but I think it's about time we get over the line in it. You know, the, yeah. the the year we lost to Chelsea, we were a better team than Chelsea that year. I know they finished mm. above us, but you know, in the individual games we played them, I thought we always looked the better side. So it it is yeah. disappoint. It is disappointing. You know, you just said something there, and that's mm. what, it's the thing that I absolutely hate about this competition. The thing that I, um, I think makes it a bit farcical, the whole Europa League, and that is about teams dropping in, right? After you've gone through all these rounds, this is why these rounds sometimes seem meaningless in a way, mm. it's apart from making money, right, yeah. for the league. Because after you've gone through that, mm. and then you go then go through a next stage again, up drops a load of teams from the Champions League. Yeah. Right? And you know, and that for me is what is wrong with this competition. You know, you saw last year Inter Milan, who were in the final, mm. dropped out yeah. of the Champions League. Yeah. And they're in the final. You know yeah. what I mean? They've got another bite of the cherry. You know what I mean? I, I think it's absolutely ridiculous. I really do. And I, I agree. I think they're two completely different competitions. They're two I'd, different I'd competitions. I'd go as far as to say, um, in the group stage, I'm watching as a fan because I love the club. And then by the last 16, so obviously there's an extra knockout round. Mm. So by the last 16, after the last 32, it starts to get quite fiercely competitive. Yeah. Um, and that's... I, yes, it makes it more interesting and it makes it more fun, I suppose. And I get why they're doing it. I bet the viewers, the, the mm. viewership goes up massively. But it's not, is it really fair? I mean, I'm, I'm looking at the Champions League groups here at some of the teams that could drop in. Um, Salzburg, they're paired with Bayern Munich and Atletico Madrid. Locomotive yeah, they're dropping in. That. They're probably dropping in. <laughs> no, they're dropping in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're in. 
Just Mirren. book him in. Book a trip yeah. to Salzburg <laughs> for February, March. Mm. Um, group B, Mock and Gladbach, Inter Milan, Real Madrid, Shakhtar Donetsk. I mean, any any of those. Real mm. Madrid, you probably would say, are comfortably going to mm. make it through. Um, Man City have Olympiacos, who knocked us out. Mm. Marseille and Porto. Ajax, Atalanta, Liverpool. It's... It's not, you know, yeah, there's, yeah, there's, there's a lot there's of really a lot, good a lot sides. Of top sides that could drop in. Man United, Paris Saint Germain, Leipzig. Yeah, you know, we, so we could be playing Man United again. You know I mean? yeah, we could be. Probably and then will be. Add to, <laughs> I know. Do you know what? I wouldn't even be surprised if we did. And then add to that the Europa League teams that I've only picked off a few here that you know we could potentially face. Who I imagine would be really tough trips. You have got Roma, Leverkusen, Benfica, Napoli, Leicester, Celtic, AC Milan, Lille, Villarreal, Spurs. Mm. I tell you what, if we get to the last 16, which we failed to do last season, if we do, it's going to be a really tricky run to the final, I yeah. think. So, yeah. yes, I completely understand why we look on this competition a little bit like, oh, it's not the Champions League, it's the Europa League, but it's, it's a difficult competition to win, especially mm. if you get to those latter rounds. So, you fancy us, in it? Um, I do, I do fancy us. I think there's going to be certain clubs like Spurs in it with Mourinho who... I think they're going to be desperate to win it. I think they're going to give it their all because mm. it's not only Champions League qualification, it's also a trophy. Now, I think while we have that pressure of wanting to be into the, in the Champions League, I don't think we have that weight of we really need to win a trophy, obviously because of what we've done in the FA Cup the last mm. six, seven years. Um, so I, I do admittedly fear them. I think Leicester, it's a good opportunity for them. Leverkusen and Roma, they you know, mm. look good at times. And I think... Um, I think while I'm, you know, wanting to definitely win it and I fancy us, I do hope we see some of the youngsters come through. Mm. I mean, you mentioned Bakaya Saka, and I think this is a real opportunity for the likes of maybe Smith Rowe or Miguel Aziz to get some mm. game time in the group stages. So, Reece Nelson as well, a chance for him to really for sure. you know, stamp his authority on the team. Absolutely. He's one who, when he has played mm. actually recently, has looked good. And you're wondering yeah. why maybe he's not getting more game time. So to sort of sum that all up, I'm feeling like a little bit like it's a bit of a slog at times. Yeah, but that's not to write off how difficult this competition can be to win. Yeah, I, I, I fancy us. You know, I think you know what I think about Mikel Arteta is that he can make Arsenal very hard to beat in mm. cup competitions. We saw it in the FA Cup, right? In cup competitions, his style, what, mm. what, what, what sometimes are playing, where he makes us very hard to beat, and then you've got you know really good strikers up front and that um, that can yeah. take the chances when we get them. I think he's made for this competition and, mm. and um, you know, wouldn't be surprised, man, you see an Arsenal Tottenham final. It's very true. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I you wouldn't, know? I wouldn't, I wouldn't I, I, do you know what? You're laughing, but I can't. I'm just, I would slightly dread that personally. I, well, I do dread not, that because, because you know, you, fancy us, it's, but yeah. You're not, no, yeah, not that I wouldn't fancy us, but could you imagine, man? It's like, that's like an all or nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Could you yeah. imagine that? Imagine losing that. No, Where do no, you go? No, no, I mean, no, no. I want to, you know, you can't even go disappear for a year abroad because of COVID, right? Yeah. So you'd be stuck here listening to them lot. But then if you win it, oh. No, no, honestly. COVID what? I, it's I, happy days. You know what I mean? It's happy to go at Tottenham fans all the time. But do not discount that. I think there's two teams. I think Mourinho as well is very good in cup competitions. Mm. He's very good at, you know, grinding it out over, you know, especially two legs, two legged cup competitions. Yeah, absolutely. Right. So, wow. Imagine. That. <laughs> and then it would be huge because the winner would be in the Champions League. Wow. That's the thing. If, if, if you're an FA Cup final, which would be painful enough to lose. Yeah. At least it's the trophy and that's it. You move on with your lives. But with yeah. this, it's, yeah, we won a European trophy before you did, however long it was ago. Oh, and we've no. and we've now got the oh. Champions League football. It is just, it could be all. It's all set up for that this season. I'm telling you, it's all set up for that. I but know. of oh. course, the game's going to be taking place on Thursday. Um, it's quite an early kickoff as well. It's yeah, five fifty-five. Five fifty-five. Six o'clock's not available apparently. Yeah. so it would just be five fifty-five. All right. So yeah, other times are available, as Ty would say. But um, yeah, five fifty-five <laughs> kickoff. Looking forward to it. We're going to be doing a watch along to that. With, um, James will be here with Cecil with all the build up to that game on the day. Then we'll be watching it. So keep it locked here on AFTV. But um, yeah, it's the start of the competition. As James said, the most difficult game in the group away from home as well. So if we can get through this, hopefully then that really sets us in good stead in getting on the way to getting further down the line and um, hopefully winning this competition.
This video is supported by Profit Accumulator. Profit Accumulator helps you to earn extra money by doing something called match betting. Match betting isn't gambling. And when you do it properly, and I mean properly, you can't lose. So get involved right now. Click the link in the description and sign up to Profit Accumulator right now.